During this time, Ron was writing an avalanche of publications, and they were required reading for all followers. He went off to Europe, and even his son by his first marriage to Polly, L. Ron Hubbard Jr., joined Scientology. It wasn't until 1953 that Ron began to wonder about a religion. And he wrote in a letter to Helen O'Brien about the possibility of making Scientology a religion. It's come to pass pretty soon, for in December of 1953, three churches were formed. The Church of American Science, the Church of Scientology, and the Church of Spiritual Engineering. <laughs> in February, the Church of, in 1954, the Church of Scientology in California was incorporated. The E-meter was discontinued. The other Dianetics groups or Scientology groups were encouraged to form become a religion. And Ron was publishing the names of those who were in good standing. By the way, one thing I neglected to mention, in his bitter dispute with, with Don Purcell, Don Purcell had retained the rights to Dianetics until 1954 when he finally gave up and gave it back to Ron. And now Scientology and Dianetics could work together. In 1955, Ron produced an interesting publication. We weren't really sure until the uh, recently that Hubbard himself had, had written it, but now there seems to be fair documentation. Uh, it's mentioned both in Russell Miller's book, Barefaced Messiah, and in Bent Corridan's book, L. Ron Hubbard, Messiah or Madman. Um, the brainwashing manual was, I guess, kind of making Scientology topical but with what was happening in the government with the uh, McCarthy hearings and with the returning Korean prisoners of war. And it was supposed to be a lecture given by Beria, who was one of the architects of Stalin's purges. And it showed how, how you could take over a country psychopolitically. Uh, Bent Corridan changes the word communist to Scientology, and it gives it an interesting ring. I did the same thing when I, when I read it. Uh, to quote from it, the changing of loyalty consists of the eradication of existing loyalties. You can do this in two ways. First, you show that the loyalties have harmed a person, and the second, by eradicating the personality itself. That was the brainwashing manual. Hubbard, by this time, was traveling to England. And in England in 1955, they experimented with an interesting way of recruiting people into Scientology. They were called casualty contacts. Very loyal members were to read the obituaries and go make a call on anyone who was recently bereaved. At this time, they also put ads in the paper asking for people who had had polio or who had arthritis, who wanted to be experimented on. Um, any, anything to get people to come. By 1956, 60 Scientology books had been published by Hubbard. And by 1957, they had invented a new e-meter, and the e-meter was back to help us once again prove the existence of past lives. The e-meter is a now fancy little gadget. In fact, I believe you can spend more than $3,000 for one currently. Uh, but basically, you know, you hold two, it measures the galvanic, galvanic skin response, and you hold onto two cans, and the needle goes back and forth. Uh, Hubbard invented a ream of terms for the way that the uh, needle moved. My favorite term for one of the needle moves is rock slam. Uh, you know, I like to say a needle go rock slam. Uh, I'm not a fan of polygraphs, and I really don't have too much faith in them. I'm quite skeptical about them. Uh, I, when Al wrote about the uh, polygraph, he said that Nixon said, well, I don't know what it does, but it scares the hell out of them. Well, I think that's probably much of the success of the polygraph. Um, but the e-meter is different. Uh, the e-meter, according to Robert Kaufman, uh, quoting L. Ron Hubbard, quote, the e-meter is never wrong. 
It sees all. It knows all. <laughs> it tells everything. Kaufman went on to say, the e-meter was the cornerstone of Ron's mystique, the only ingredient, ingredient in his recipe of tangible nature. Whenever he needed to prove anything, he'd fall back on the needle reeds. If something were to mar one's respect for the omniscient meter, the entire edifice, built on faith, stupidity, or whatever, was in danger of crumbling. And the e-meter is still used today. By 1959, Ron had bought a mansion in England called St. Hill Manor. He was married still to Mary Sue Hubbard, and they had four children, two girls and two boys. And by 1959, there were some interesting other procedures instituted. All staff had to be security checked on the e-meter. And his son, by his first marriage, L. Ron Hubbard Jr., blew. That's Scientology for leaving. His mother died, and Ron Hubbard was looking for a country that he could take over. By the early 60s, he was offering Scientology to President Kennedy. And in spite of that, the FDA raided the, the headquarters in the District of Columbia because they felt that the e-meters were being used to practice medicine without a license and promising undue cures. By 1963, which is AD 13, not Anno Domini, after Dianetics, Ron again went back to Pasadena, but not in a, quite the same way as he'd come the first time. He announced that he'd visited heaven, not once, but twice, 43 and 42 trillion years ago. When he'd come 43 trillion years ago to heaven, it was a little town on another planet. And you know what? It was just like Bush Gardens in Pasadena. 